I'm good to go. Yeah. Oh, you missed a great Dumber talk last night. <laughs> <laughs> I probably missed one too, right? <gasps> yeah. <laughs> how, how did it go? It was good. It was good? It's good. <laughs> Very good. How about you? It's okay, but like this lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, t I'll tell you. I'll tell you about it later. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I'm only kidding. My Australian sense of humour. What can I say? Um, all right. So we're here meditating. And now, after one day on the retreat, we're now, like I said before, we're in the middle of the retreat now, starting to look to the end. It's crazy, right? Uh, in the middle of the retreat, one day. And typically what you'll find around this point in the retreat is that the you'll notice that the kind of the energies in your body start to settle down. The tensions start to sort of just become a bit quiet. And so I think, okay, starting to even out a little bit. So that's good. Hopefully that's what yeah, that's what's happening. One of the uh, one of the words that we use to talk about uh, meditation in Buddhism is the word citta bhavana. So citta means the mind, bhavana means to grow. So the word citta bhavana means to grow the mind. And this is something that you're all experiencing here. Believe it or not, you're evolving your mind you are going to a higher state of consciousness. Right? When I, when you, th if you, you know, if you sort of read about it and you hear about these kinds of things, it sounds like something very mysterious. What does like a higher plane of consciousness mean? But actually it's nothing really that mysterious about it. So if you compare, for example, uh, what your mind is like when you're asleep, compared to what it's like when you're awake. Well, it's hard, isn't it? Because we, <laughs> we can't, we're not really aware when we're asleep. But like, what, think about what happens when you, you know, when you're just sort of waking up and you feel like your mind's really kind of groggy and slow and you can't form a coherent thought and these kinds of things. And then you jump under the cold shower and you're like, boy, you <laughs> Every cell in your body suddenly is ripped into Awakening. It was pretty cold this morning, wasn't it? Yeah. Anyway, invigorating. So, uh, so these are t different states of consciousness. Actually, it talks about this. Not in Buddhism, it doesn't talk about too much about that waking and sleeping thing. But you find it a lot actually in the Upanishads, the pre-Buddhist Upanishads. It was a major theme there, and it seemed that this was something that really kind of made a major um, impression. Right? on the mind, when you contemplate it, you realize that like for half the day or several hours every day, this kind of waking, <coughs> semi-rational consciousness that we're used to suddenly goes away and we go into some weird subterranean cavern of darkness and primordial archetypes that, that want to eat us or <laughs> make us stand in front of a classroom giving a demonstration only to realize we don't have any pants on or something like that right? <laughs> so it's weird right 
think about it. So this is the changes in consciousness. This is what the Buddha's talking about. He's talking about impermanence, right? You, you experience that every day. And of course, during the day, you know, the same thing's happening constantly at a more kind of minor level, right? And you go through periods where your mind feels very kind of bright and alert, and then through periods when you feel kind of really dull, or maybe, you know, maybe some time when you feel uh, sort of grumpy and annoyed, another time when you feel really expansive and joyful and so on. And every time you go through those different moods and so on, your consciousness is changing. It's not just, and, and we don't really notice it. See, what we notice is the stuff that's in our mind or what we do with our mind, right? So we notice our thoughts or we notice our mood or we notice the things that we say or these kinds of things. That's all the stuff that's happening. But along with that, the mind itself is changing. So by the mind itself, what I mean is the awareness, right? The, the mind that knows all of those things. The mind that knows all of those things is changing all of the time. So when we come to do a meditation retreat, what we're doing is we are um, we're taking advantage of that quality of the mind, the fact that the mind is conditioned. And in Buddhism, and I guess in different places and so on, people have lots of kind of uh, debates about what is the essential nature of the mind, what is the true nature of the mind. But according to the Buddha, the mind doesn't have any true nature, anything more than anything else has a true nature. The true nature of the mind is to be conditioned. That's all. I mean, if you want, you can say that like the, the characteristic quality of the mind is to be aware, right? But that's not really the nature of the mind, because awareness is changing. So the true nature of the mind is to be conditioned. And if you give the mind certain kinds of conditions, it'll become in a certain way. If you give it certain other conditions, it'll become in a certain other kind of way. So what we try to do on a retreat is we try to create the conditions, as much as we can, that's going to be supportive towards evolving and growing the mind. <coughs> That's what this is all about. And when we evolve and we grow the mind, everything that's happening in your mind will become better. By better, what I mean is probably worse a lot of the time. <laughs> right? Makes sense, yeah? Yeah, no, it doesn't. Stop trying to <laughs> pretend it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is that everything becomes more, right? Thoughts will become more vivid, right? Uh, sensations become stronger. You're sitting there and some little itch becomes like this incredibly overpowering need. You, have the, you don't just have a scratch, which is just a bit annoying. You have this overpowering need to do it. And you're like, holy crap, I have never cared as much about the coming climate apocalypse and the death of humanity as I've cared about this itch right here, right now. <laughs> <laughs> what does that tell me about my sense of values? <laughs> right? <laughs> right? All right. It, these things which are so small and they take up this incredible part of your mind. So this itch. So, so what, that, what is that itch telling you? That itch is the, the mind expanding. It's the mind growing. You now know that itch much more than you did before. You are much more aware of it. That's the point. And everything that happens in your mind is like that. Every mood that you have, every thought that you have, every idea that you have becomes brighter. The moods become more compelling. The thoughts become more persuasive or insistent. So it's not like you just sort of go in the course of meditation and gradually all of the kind of the nasty things settle down and all you have is love for everybody. I mean, it might be, <laughs> right? There is a certain small and very annoying percentage of the population for whom that happens. Okay? <laughs> But for most people, it's a bit more complicated, right? 
so what's happening is that everything's becoming amplified. Everything's becoming brighter and stronger and more vivid. Right? Now, on the whole, okay, over time, then we would expect that it's the good parts of your mind which are going to prevail and which are going to, you know, that's what we're trying to do, right? So we're trying to amplify love and not hate. We're trying to amplify um, uh, peace and not restlessness, right? That's where we're headed to. But that's, that's like the destination. That's not necessarily where we're at right now because the mind has, still has delusion in it, it's still confused. Actually, it's not quite that simple. And so it's very common that you might be just sitting there in your meditation and just like be consumed by hate. Right? I mean, it happens. I remember my f the very first retreat that I did, I got to, got to one point in the retreat, and this was like after I'd had all these really good meditations and really good insights and breakthroughs and things, and then somehow I got stuck in this rut where I was planning this revenge fantasy <laughs> against this, this guy who'd ripped me off before I'd left Australia, before I'd gone traveling. And I didn't even realize that I'd like held on to this, right? I mean, this was months ago, and I hadn't really thought about it. And then it sort of came up in my meditation. I'm like, I'm like, oh my God, that's like 48 hours I've been thinking of how I can get back at this guy. <laughs> right? And I, I, that's not me at all. I'm not a vengeful person at all. Normally I'm just like, oh, okay, take my money. And, <laughs> <laughs> right? And, right? But that's, that's came up. And so you, you see that. And that's, what, that's what's in your mind for that time. So anything can come, and when it comes, it'll be so powerful and so persuasive, right? You know, it'll be the thought that like, like I have to get out now, I have to leave the retreat right now, because that's going to be such an incredible Netflix special on tonight, and I actually <laughs> cannot miss it, right? <laughs> right? So, and these thoughts, and when they come into your mind, or... And, but, and again, not necessarily bad things, right? So one thing that happens in, in your meditation is that, that you, you'll find that you have a lot of, start having a lot of ideas, right? And it might be just ordinary things. It might be something about your work, right? They have this idea, oh, hang on, why don't we do that, right? Or maybe if you're like a writer, you'll have, oh, a good idea for a story or something like that. Or anything it could be, right? If you're, if you're a cook, You'll sit there and you think, oh my God, no. that's another thing I did on my first retreat actually, was plan some, like a really great recipe book. <laughs> 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 right? So, and you kind of think, and these ideas will be there and they'll be really clear and powerful. And, and of course, that, that's not a bad thing, right? Creativity is good. It's good to have these ideas and these kinds of things. And it's not a bad thing, but it's not what you're there for. Yeah? So it becomes a distraction. Yeah? But it's not... But understand it for what it is. That is chitta bhavana. That is your mind becoming more. Your mind is becoming better. And then you're starting to learn, oh, that's how all of this works. Right? Another thing that tends to happen, usually after a few days in retreat, not for everyone, but for a few days, in, as, as like when we first begin the retreat, we're, first, we're thinking about things that happened right then or the day before, and like the emotions and the moods from that time are still very present and very real but then after a day or two usually that subsides and what happens is that you start to remember things from further and further in the past and so it might be like last week or last month or even like last year or in your childhood maybe even previous lives who knows but what's happening again is that your mind is becoming more clear and when it's becoming more clear it just suddenly sees these things and it might be, and it's it's strange you know you just be in your retreat and then suddenly this image will come to your mind from like when you're a kid something that like you haven't thought of for years and it's just there as fresh as that that day that you were there yeah so when you see these things you know what what when, whenever these things happen we tend to get distracted by the surface of them Right? We see that memory and we get distracted by the surface of the memory, but the meaning of it is the important thing. The meaning of it is that your mind is becoming more powerful. Actually, that's the same power through which somebody can start to recollect their past lives. 
that's what happens. That's why you can recollect your past lives, because you purified your mind and you made it so powerful that you can remember things even that happened so long ago. It's the same thing that you're experiencing in your meditation when you start to recollect, not deliberately, but just spontaneously, things will come to your mind from such a long time ago. You're expanding your mind and every power in your mind can become greater. Powers for good and also powers for evil. Now, if you come on a retreat like this, a retreat like this is very pure, right? Nobody's here to make money. Nobody's here to get any lottery numbers, right? You wouldn't mind, right? <laughs> right? Nobody's, you know, is here to just like, uh, you know, sort of complete a course or pass an exam, right? Uh, no one's here for any impure motive. You're just here to practice Dharma. And this whole place is just, that's what it's for. It's very, very pure motivation. You're just here to practice Dhamma, listen to the teachings, to meditate. And because you have that pure motivation, then those good parts of the, of the mind are going to prevail. Right? But just be ready to encounter a few sort of random things along the way. And when it happens, don't think that there's anything wrong with you. Okay, it's fine. Actually, it's good. It's good that you experience those things and actually because you learn that these things are inside you. And it's good that you experience those things inside a safe environment like this, where you can feel that kind of anger or whatever that comes up and you, oh, you know that's inside you. You get the wisdom. The anger isn't good, but the wisdom you have about the anger to understand it, that's good. That's learning. And it's better that you have it there than you have it when you're stuck in traffic or something and you're yelling at someone or, or whatever. Here you have the chance to see it and observe it and to let go of it. And you learn from it. And when you can learn from it like that, then you're already well on the way to mastering it and moving beyond it. So expect the weird. But don't, also don't be disappointed if nothing weird happens to you, okay? Some people, that's their path. Some people, their path is just step by step and nothing much happening. That's also okay. Your spiritual path is so varied. Your path is your own. Don't worry about anything that you experience or you don't experience on your path. The only thing which is a real obstacle, right? is if you stop walking. As long as you're still walking, you're going to be okay. So for this day, we're settling down into the second day of meditation. Uh, yesterday, I emphasized a lot about uh, uh, the mindfulness of the body, and I encourage you to uh, focus on coming back to the physical sensations of uh, the touch, and the awareness of the postures as much as possible. So obviously, you know, that's a good thing to keep doing to, uh, today. But uh, what I suggest to you for today's practice is, as well as focusing on the uh, physical aspect of that, pay a little bit more attention also to the emotional aspect of what you're doing, particularly to, any, to the feelings of joy and happiness that come. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about happiness right now. I might talk more about it this evening. But uh, for those of you who believe that the spiritual path is one of self-flagellation and guilt, <laughs> then you've got some bad news in store for you. Because you are going to have to forgive yourself and you're going to have to love yourself and you're going to have to, and I'm sorry to say this, you're going to have to experience like lots of happiness. <laughs> And I'm sorry to be dogmatic about this, but you're just going to have to, all right? No ifs or buts about it. And without it, no, it's not going to work. Happiness is how the mind finds peace. And happiness in Buddhism and happiness in meditation comes from letting go. 
So happiness and joy is something which is your inheritance. It's something that is part of your nature. It's not something I can give you. It's not something which is special. It's not something which you need some kind of special conditions to achieve. It's something which is actually innate in the heart. And it will come when you let go. Again, it's very individual how it comes and what way it comes. All of this is very, very varied. So don't worry about it. But just know that as you're meditating and as you're practicing, that happiness and that joy is what will bring your mind to peace. Peace will bring your mind to clarity. Clarity will let you see what things are. Seeing what things are is what will free your mind. So when, during today's practice, whatever meditation method it is that you're using, I want you to pay uh, special attention to any feelings, any positive feelings that you're experiencing through the meditation. It might be a feeling of just being peaceful. It might be a feeling of acceptance, a feeling of comfort and ease. Uh, it might be just sort of uh, a, a, a feeling of relief that you know you don't have to worry about all the stresses of work for a few days it might be a feeling of of uh, gladness or joy it might be like a positive feeling in your heart you might feel something that's actually like in your body so the kind of the kind of joy and the kind of pleasure that we're looking for in meditation ultimately is something that's very much embodied it's very much like a physical feeling and you can feel it you can feel it like steeping your body, like the Buddha used these uh, uh, similes, like, uh, like a flower, a lotus flower, which is growing underneath the water. And the, 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 the cool water is pervading through the whole lotus. Yeah? That kind of idea, that kind of immersion in that pleasant feeling. Yeah? This, is, this is the kind of joy and the kind of pleasure that the Buddha was pointing towards. And through that kind of pleasure, all of the, 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 the stresses and weariness and anxieties that you're holding inside your body will gradually ease and calm themselves down. Yeah? It takes time, but it's something to cultivate. So, so this is my suggestion for you today. Just pay attention and just notice what those different kinds of pleasure are like. And feel free to enjoy it and to play around with it. And sometimes it might be very strong feelings or strong emotions or whatever, that's fine. And just let it come through you and just experience whatever it is. So this is your homework for today. To experience joy. Can you do that? Yeah, you sure? Okay, very good. Excellent. So I might leave it at that for now. And I will let you get on with practice.